Baptist Church of Christ Wednesday night worship service. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide us till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. None else can heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one, no, not one. None else like him is so meek and lowly. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles and he guide us till the day is done. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Come on, Jesus knows all about our struggles he will guide us till the day is done there's not a friend like the lowly jesus no not one no one amen 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 there's not a friend like the lowly jesus amen amen i also want to take a moment to present and introduce our preacher for this evening he is a dedicated disciple of canaan baptist church of christ he has a passion in his heart for serving God's people. He serves seniors, he serves the children, he serves whomever he can in whatever capacity that he can. He has a heart that gives and he asks nothing in return, for it is his love for Jesus that motivates him to serve. He is a graduate of New York Theological Seminary, with a Master's of Divinity, and he is Minister Larry Caldwell. Let us greet him with a great amen. Good evening, everyone. As I come here this evening, thanking God for this opportunity to stand before my brothers and sisters, those that are on TV, those that are looking at me here in the church this evening, I say to all of us, God is good. And God has a blessing for all of us with our name on it. And no matter what these challenges in life are that we are experiencing today, we must continue to give this life journey our best effort and keep pressing forward. 
In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I'd like to begin with a word of prayer. Dear Lord and dear God, we thank you for blessing us to see this new day of life. And we ask, dear God, as I share the spiritual words that I strongly believe and feel that you gave me to share this evening, that they be motivating us and encouraging us to hold on to your unchanging hand and keep pressing forward as we live this life journey. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we welcome your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. And family, to start off this evening, I would like to begin this service by reading Mark chapter 11, verse 22 and 24. And it reads as follow. Please follow me with your Bible because I left my glasses in the car and I might need someone to give me some help if I find myself stumbling over these little itsy bitty letters here. And it reads as follow. Truly, Excuse me, and it reads as follow. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Verse 22, Jesus answered them, have faith in God. And we drop down to verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Thus, the scripture teaches us that as we pray to our God in need of our whatever situation it is, your God hears your prayer, and your God will answer your prayer in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We do not worship uh, rub, the, rub the bowl and God will pop out of the bowl, God. We serve the creator of humanity and our faith is what will cause our prayer requests to manifest themselves in our life based on our faith in our God and the precious name of Jesus Christ. So let's keep on believing. Family, I come to strongly believe that one of the main keys to life is to have faith in God. To have faith in God. And the sooner you accept this reality of life, the much better your life will be in the holy name of the teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I repeat that please? is that the sooner you accept the reality of this God and the precious name and teachings of Jesus Christ, your life will improve tremendously. And you might say to yourself, oh, how does he know? How does he know? What do he know about my life? And what do he know about what I am experiencing? And I say to you, I have no idea what you might be experiencing but what I do know is what I went through and I know that if God can turn my life around God can turn your life around and my life has been 145 percent better than what it was 30 years ago when I was known as Larry Love in 122nd Street. Go around there and ask somebody about that guy and see what they say. So family, let us keep believing and don't give up no matter how things seems to be turning throughout society today. I perceive that we are now living in a desperate time of life as we have been so beaten down by this coronavirus situation and that housing and that housing building 
in Florida that crashed down on all of those people. So, so sad. So, so sad. And mind you, I live in a residence somewhat similar to that community, that building. And every time I step out on my 19th floor terrace now, I kind of hold on to the edge a little tighter. This day and time that we're living in, family, it is such a challenging time for all of humanity. And so how we have been so beaten by the coronavirus and that housing building in Florida crashed down, leaving 156 people missing and considered dead. Then we have the madness that is running throughout our society with people looking like us that are shooting guns. They don't even shoot the gun, they throw the bullet. They shake the bullet out of the gun. And they're shooting the gun around our little children and around our elderly mothers and grandmothers, uncles and aunts. They are going through society shooting guns and killing our children at the tender age of two through 16 years old and some a few years older. Just how do you shoot at somebody and kill a little two-year-old baby? God forbid, in the worst days of my life, had I ever found myself in that kind of situation, the police would not have to look for me. I could not live with the thought that I killed a two-year-old innocent child. I would have to go and turn myself in to the police about that situation. Yes, I would turn myself in. And so here we are, family, living this life with all of this unnecessary violence, living this life with this building crashing down with all of these people in it at 1 a.m. in the morning, which tells us nobody was sitting there watching TV at 1 a.m., chances are. Nobody was in the shower. Nobody was just coming in the door of that building. All of those people were in bed at 1 a.m. And the building crashed on those poor people. And we are still looking for 150, 65 people to the day. Lord, have mercy. So here we are. Then we have the madness of the running through our society with the people looking like us, shooting and killing each other. And I say to all of you watching TV and here today, if you was to so happen to be driving by any neighborhood and you saw me with a gun in my hand shooting at somebody, please, Tell the police that it's Larry Coldwell and he live in Riverdale up in the Bronx. Please tell on me, cause I need the police to get my ignorance out of this society, destroying our future. Those children, two years old, that little 10 year old boy, that birthday was another day, a week away, and all the other ones are our future. And if we allow, if we continue to sit back and let these young people that are doing this madness kill our future, then where will we be? We need to stand up as a community and reach out and support. So I say, family, let's review Psalms 37, verse 3 to 5. And it reads as follow, family. Don't forget to please follow me because this writing is so small and I left my glasses. So here we are. Trust in the Lord and do good. So you will dwell in the land and enjoy security. 
take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And verse five reads, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will act and he will act on your behalf. So family, what we are learning here from these scriptures is God is the key to our lives. But not only is God the key to our lives, but we are responsible ourselves for our lives as well. God has instructed you to follow the sign, the red light and the green light sign. And the red light means stop and wait for the green light. So it's your responsibility to stop on the red light and wait for the green light. Because if you do not stop and wait for the green light and proceed forward on the red light, then you're subject to put your life in danger. And so we are all responsible for monitoring our behavior and monitoring the way we live our lives. So family, our God will see us through these troubling times, but once again, we have a right and we are responsible for playing a part and seeing ourselves through these troubling times. I now say for those of us that has not been vaccinated for the virus due to how unfair those that are in power manipulates us because the virus the, um, injection was ready when that first fella was the president before this current president here. And him and his family got it and they did not give it out to the public until June of last year is when we were able to start getting it. And so family, I say to you, you have a right to be suspicious of whether it will work or not. But I say to you, I considered it myself and it took me about five or six months to step up and get my vaccinate vaccination. I received both of them and as far as I can tell, I don't see any problems with it. And I'm just saying that to encourage you that if you have not been vaccinated for the coronavirus, please do society a favor. Trust in God and go and get that vaccine knowing that it works and it will protect you from catching the virus that can find you laid up in the hospital, unable to breathe and passing this life journey. Don't forget, the red light means stop. The green light means you can go. So when you see the red light, stop. And the green light, go. So the vaccine for that coronavirus is the green light. Thank God for moving man's heart that no matter how much money they're focused on with introducing those vaccines, they will solve the corona problem virus issue with us if we trust in that green light to get that vaccine. So family, as I move on, as for the building that crushed in Florida, if the owners of the building would have stepped up and addressed the issues of the building because they were already informed of the condition of the building, that it was getting very weak and it was subject to come down. They were informed since I think 2018, they was informed. And so because of the cost of it, we're subject to not respond to things because of how expensive it might be to address it. Regardless to the cost for fixing it, 
that building would still be standing and the missing people would be alive and not under all the rubbish. We, throughout humanity, must put our lives ahead of money and address any financial issues that our community is up against that could lead to the death of some members of our community, whether they look like us or not. Our politicians, those that are in power, they need to be honest and not play that go along to get along game that I see is going on in our political system. I'll present myself to you to vote for me as the nicest fella you would ever want to vote. Oh, will you please cast your vote for me? I love you. Please vote for me. But the reality of it is, is I am going to play the game to get along so that I can get me a nice salary, a nice career, be in a position of authority, and live my life better than those that are voting for me. So we need all of our politicians to be honest and truthful as they run for office and stand up and do what's right throughout this community for the better of everything. We have a problem with our water system coming up. That's a big issue that's subject to crash us in the head one day. We have a problem with a lot of our animals that is subject to crash us in the head one day. And we have a problem with the weather that they refuse to accept and address. We need to learn from all of these things that we are experiencing. That money, it's good. I would love to have me a, a, a couple of pockets full of money. But one thing about money is once you transition this side of life, you can't take the money with you. And money will only last if you be honest with it and fair with it with compassion and mercy for all of mankind. And especially when you take a vow, you take a vow that you promise to be truthful and honest and take care of New York City. And the reality of it is, is you're not doing any of what you promise. So here we are, family, standing here, trusting in our God as we look back to our ancestors during the slavery period. And they used to sing them song, swing low, sweet chariot, coming to carry us home. So in spite of what we're enduring, what we are experiencing, let us continue to believe in our God and believe that much more as I move on. Let us now review Proverbs chapter 22. Verse 6, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 reads as follows. Train up a child in the way he and she should grow. And when he and she is old, they will not depart from it. The Bible is warning us, advising us with godly wisdom to train up your child in the way your child should grow. And as they get older and become that teenager, they will eventually reach that level of their um, maturity to surrender their lives to God for their best benefit. And that's just how life is. But if we train them up, and that's being said because here we are advised to train up our children in the way he and she should live their lives and go when they are adults, and they will not depart from that way. The re reality of this spiritual narrative is that all of us will make poor choices 
as we are growing up. But in the holy teachings of Jesus Christ, we will eventually strive to live our lives by way of the teachings of mommy and daddy regarding God's tree of life, way of living. And it's the best way. I wish I could have learned it. I was 35 years old when I finally reached that level. I wish I could have learned it, reached that level when I was like 12 years old. But I had to go through what I had to go through. And at 35 years old, I surrendered my life to the God of my understanding. And that life has been 150% much better. In fact, I don't know if I should say this in here, but I'm going to say it. So please, after the service, don't nobody ask me for any money. Please, don't ask me for any money. But when I lived that bad boy life and all that money was coming through my hands, the faster it came through, the faster it went out. And now that I live my life serving my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I have some money. I'm going to leave it right there. I have some money. And I'm going to just leave it right there because I don't want you to call me to borrow no money because I don't have enough to lend it to you. So I'm going to leave it there that that money has stayed in my hands by changing my life for the better. That spirit, that spirit that God talks about is the best, is the best thing to live is that spirit that God is talking about. Live your life in the spirit of God so that you do not fulfill the lust of your flesh. I see it, I want it. Oh, yeah, I see it, I want it. The lust of your flesh. Live your life in the spirit of God. Okay, family, reality of the spiritual narrative is that all of us will make those poor life choices. However, but in the holy teachings of Jesus Christ, we will eventually strive to live our lives by way of teachings of mommy and daddy regarding God's tree of life way of living. As we now see so many of our young adults acting out in such an ignorant and heartless way to others to the point that our children are being killed by gunshots from the tender age of two to 10 years old, years old and older. Mommy and daddy watching this service, please listen. Mommies and daddies that have those little babies, please listen to this part of my message because this is, I am also a licensed social worker. Yes, I'm a licensed social worker also. And this is my clinical perspective of this whole issue of these things that are going down through our community. To my, to my spiritual words of advice, now my clinical words of advice as a licensed social worker regarding raising our children, these people of ours that are going around shooting at each other in parks filled with children and shooting in windows of people's homes and knocking grandma down at 85 years old in the street to rob her or push grandpa on the train at 75 and 80 years old for nothing. All of this behavior that's going on in our communities today, filled with children shooting in windows of people's homes leading to the death of our children, who are our future generation. <clears throat> From a clinical perspective, it is clear that these shootings have not been trained up in Jesus Christ's way of life. And they have been psychologically manipulated to behave in such a hateful and dangerous way of life. When I was growing up here in Harlem, if you touch grandma, grandpa, mommy or daddy, 122nd Street, every kid in that block would get together and we would jump on you and teach you a lesson. 
So here we are today. We have also been taught in the Bible that if you spare the rod on the child, you will spoil the child. And the child will be subject to be manipulated in their thinking to live their lives in a very hateful and violent way of life towards their own people. They get caught up. You say, well, Larry, I'm raising my baby. My boy is six years old. How is he going to turn out that way? And I say to you, listen to the music that these children are exposed to. All of those songs with them F words and them B words and them N words and those kill, kill words in them are songs that these children listen to. And listening to that music, as they grow up, they begin subconsciously accept that as a way of life. And when they find themselves in any ignorant situation, their subject to act out from the song lyrics of the song. All of those negative lyrics in those songs empower those children's thinking to act out in that type of way. We was taught when I was a child, if you curse in front of grandma, you would have bad luck all your life. So we would be standing out, talking with each other and playing and cursing some words. And when grandma come by, we all stop talking and waiting until grandma go ahead on about her business or grandpa go ahead on about her business. We had levels of respect no matter how poor our choices were that we made. We respected our parents, our community. Whereas the, a lot of these young people today, they do not understand what it means to respect your parents because they were taught. I forget the lawyer's name that killed the little baby they adopted back there in 1987. Him and his girl wife killed the little baby and they changed the law that parents cannot discipline children. But the Bible says, if you spare the rod, you will spoil a child. And my mother used to beat us with an ironing cord whenever we got in trouble. My mother would tear my butt up with an ironing cord. And every hit she gave me, I deserved every last one of them. And she only whipped me on my tail where my head was at. That's the way she whipped me at, on my tail. And so I say to us all, family, listen to the lyrics of those negative songs that your children are exposed to. Watch some of their TV programs. Look at some of the stuff that they see on those internet and on those laptops and stuff that they're fixated on. And you will see it's all about killing this, killing that, killing this, killing that, killing that, killing this. And it's all about the F word, the B word, and the N word in the lyrics of their music. I have three daughters. And when I lived with them, that's my first marriage. When I lived with them, I did not allow any of that negative stuff in my house. I refused to accept that we only have one TV in there, intentionally, one television, and I controlled every channel and only allowed them to watch two hours of TV per day. And I look at those shows, and from my perspective, I find them very, very ignorant and unfair to our children in terms of how they're manipulating them to see life. It's so unfair. So family, as I begin to close out this service, I say it loud, oh yes, I think back to our songs when I was growing up. We had the song compared to the songs today. We had the song, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. We had the song, Friendship Train, Everybody Shake a Hand, Make a Friend. Remember those songs? 
we grew up with those songs. Those songs have the spirit of God's love and mercy for each other in it, as opposed to the songs that our children are being lambashed with today, with all of that kill, 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 FBN language in it. So I say to you, mommy watching TV, you daddy watching, uncle, aunt, whoever, if you are an adult and you like that music, that's on you. But don't expose your child to that music because it's bad for your child's life. And I say to all of us, let us keep our faith in God in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let's hold tight to our spiritual belief and know that in spite of what we go through, as long as we stop at the green light, God is responsible for watching over us with the red light. And God will never let us down. God will see us through these troubling times of life. And so I say to all of us, as we gather here this evening, and as we prepare to close out this sermon, I say to all of us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God. Acknowledge God and God will direct your path. And to you young people, I say, the sooner you surrender your life to God in the precious name of Jesus Christ and walk in the spirit of God, I guarantee you, your life will be 10 times better than what it is today because God's got a blessing for you with your name on it. So dear Lord and dear God, I thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share with my family of your goodness and your mercy. Oh, and I ask dear God, okay. please continue to bless us and keep soon us. And in Jesus Christ's soon, precious name, we are amen. We going to see the King soon and, and very soon. soon. We, we are, are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Woo! Amen, amen, soon and very soon. So family, I will now, everything is over? The lights, the mic is off? It's over? Oh, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, folks. God bless you. And since it's over, it's over. Say what? So, dear Lord and dear God, as we gather at this point of the service, Lord God, to say thank you for this evening, Lord God, and for the service that we have experienced here. And dear God, as I close out, dear God, I say to any of you that are watching this program that if you have not surrendered your life to the faith you swear you believe in, reconsider and surrender your life. So dear God, as we close out, I say thank you, Lord. And I ask that you bless all of us that have gathered here today all of them that have watched us on the TV stations, Lord God, bless us all and bless this world, dear God. And then we say that house that fell down and those families that are in such pain, Lord God, comfort them and strengthen them. And then there's those families that had to undergo the burying of my two-year-old child, my 10-year-old son, and all of those children, dear God, comfort their families and strengthen them. And we thank you for giving us this opportunity this evening to come together as we give you all the praise, honor, and glory, thanking you for the blessed gift of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you.